Matondao. And of course, on the Real Talk table today, from my left hand side, we have Marshall in the building and Elfo. How are you doing, guys? How are you doing? Real Marshall, talk, how are you doing? Real talk, real talk, real talk. You guys are bringing on Real Talk today. Okay. She's so excited. Mm. You won't believe the hassle she had to put some people through this morning. <laughs> and then she's here with all the energy, all the charisma, all the, you know, vocals mm. and. You know, like you name it. Not there earlier. <laughs> you can do that magically. I really don't know. <laughs> it just happens. So my office, I'm yelling at staff. I'm telling my driver what is wrong with you. I know that. And I get and I'm all excited. I think it's because I'm doing, I'm seeing an handsome guest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Echo, how are you? <laughs> Echo, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good <laughs> Marshall. Uh, it's good to again. see you again. I haven't seen you in donkey years. Yeah, that's because we've not been on set together. Okay. I was, I was, and I think it's a deliberate ploy from, uh, you know, the chief producer, yeah, you know, you you know that kind of thing. Wives, you know, they just want to. Anyway, <laughs> good afternoon, viewer. It's nice to have you on Real Talk with Kike. You know, we're super excited because... Uh, Uncle Larry. Is All right, here with what us. Nigeria say today in history? <laughs> Let's check it out. Today in history. We, on this okay. day in history, we'll be right back. Please stay with us. On this day in history, exactly 23 years ago, 15th of June, 1998, General Olushegu Aremu Matthew Obasanjo was released from prison. The man of destiny, little did he know after his release from Koja prison, few months later, he would be heading to Asarok to be the first Nigerian to rule the country in both military and democratic dispensation. Right, on this day in history, I think this is the shortest on this day in history that we've ever mm -hmm. um, gone through together. And I think also the most positive one, to be precise, True. because I know that in the last six months, on this day in history, I've been so negative, and it's not uh, uplifting at all. Marsha, what's your take on, on this day in history today? Well, well, I'd like to make an excuse for, the, for you and the producers. I mean, um, on this saying that uh, for the last month, it's been negative. It's not just it's not you or our producers making it negative. It's because... That has been what, what has been available, you know, over over time. Mm -hmm. uh, negative news, and we can't help but you know tell what were the events on this day in history. On this particular one, this day in history, it said little did he know, Obasanjo, mm -hmm. that he was heading to Asu Rock from Kujie. I don't think that was the case. I think it was a ploy. I think he knew. I think he was educated and enlightened about what was going to be his fate as he was leaving uh, Kujie prison. Was, there were these negotiations. negotiations that went on that we didn't know. Are you for real? Yes. Okay. What's your you submission know, on the... You know that better. For me, I just think it's, it's just a destiny playing out. It played out then, you know, because uh, for... I, I was really quite young when he was first the uh, mm -hmm. head of state, mm -hmm. you know, and only for him to be the democratic president you know, of the country, so you know, they needed to bring a compensation of, oh, definitely, yeah, so definitely. I quite agree with you. Yes, I agree with you, you know, and it saved the situation it somewhat. Did. It, did. it did. All right. It's okay. time for a quick break from our sponsors. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The amount of issues and challenges Nigerians go through are enough to overwhelm us. Mm. Issues of insecurity, violence, abduction, poverty, inflation, economic instability are some of these issues or challenges to mention but a few. Many of these issues are devastating for Nigerians or average Nigerians, but only a few examine the mental health impact of these challenges for striving and struggling Nigerians. Part of the mental and psychological and emotional challenges faced are blood pressure related diseases, societies and domestic violences and also i must mention this work on the performance it is interesting to note that the world health organization who has revealed that nigerian has the highest suicidal rate amongst african countries in 2016 with over 17,000 lives lost to suicidal mm. as at 2019 if that was the figure in 2016 
nothing leads more to society than poor mental health and frustrated lifestyle. The question on my mind is, as the figure reduced? After the pandemic scare, loss of lives and jobs could have been, you know, better and could have also, shall I say that, the insecurity and economic downturn, poverty and violence has taken an upturn and could Nigerians be better in terms of their mental health and psychological stability? Go nowhere. We have a guest of global width and recognition capable of demystifying our thoughts. Our guest today is Olushola Larry, the catalyst. Let's take a quick look at his profile. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the show. Great to have you on the set today. We call you the catalyst, uh, but for the purpose of the show, I think I would like to refer to you as a mental health doctor. How are you doing today, sir? Very well, thank you very much, Kike. And you look, you look young. You look. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Oh, yeah. Kike, uh, he, he's here already. You, all can, right. you can uh, have him. Uh, oh, come on. He's here already. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, let's be serious now. Welcome. So much. Yes, yeah, yes welcome Marshall, to the program. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, my, my first question to you. I know Nigerians are frustrated, you know, especially with the majority of the poverty or some of the non-functional hospitals that is ongoing at the moment. Some have um, their relative killed um, from violence, from adoption and insurgencies and the like. So hence the tension and the protests that have led to a, a quite a number of loss in a few days. And my question now is, how important is it for Nigerians to have mental health in shape of uh, amidst the challenges that we are going through presently? All right. Thank you very much, Kike. You know, it's really an honor and privilege to be on this incredible platform and Welcome. speaking to, you know, um, Nigerians. Um, you know, if you look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right, you would find out that at the bottom of the pyramid, like the foundation of existence, yeah. is security. Yeah. Okay. Right? You know, security, shelter, uh, food, uh, air, basics. you know, basics. Just of the basics or basics mm. of survival, mm. you know, and everybody deserves to live in an environment that is civil and safe. If not, right, then we can safely say that we live in a jungle. Mm. Now, the rules of engagement in a safe environment are different from the rules of engagement in a jungle. In a jungle, the lion takes anything that he wants there's no equity there's no justice right he has the right to do whatever he likes and if you look at what's going on around right you will begin to see the semblance of you know um human beings turning into what they are really not and what is the cause of that we're all being nurtured into a completely different nature and so it is time for us to step back and ask ourselves the question, what exactly, right, do we each need to do? Yeah. Because it seems like we all need to step back and recalibrate and ask ourselves, what do we have control over? Mm -hmm. And what we have control over is really our families for now. And so how do we begin to ensure <clears throat> that every member of our family is mentally, psychologically, and emotionally safe and that is going to be born out of physical safety a sense of physical safety and so you know everybody right that is human right the difference between him and that thing that animal that exists in the jungle is that we can think think reason sure. we can reason mm -hmm. right we we can love we can show care and we can also speak we can with our speak. mouth. You know, we can share how we are feeling, right? And we can listen. And we can show empathy mm -hmm. and compassion. And these are the very first levels of, you know, um, interventions. So how do we ensure that we distress in the family? We distress in our schools. We distress in the various institutions, mm. right, that are very key. So family is one, our schools is another, our religious institutions mm -hmm. are others. If we take on those three, you would find out that we would have covered a lot of people. A lot of people that either talk are influential. 
and they will go on, right, to influence the people that are within their spheres of influence. Mm -hmm. And if we do that systematically, right, we will be regulating, we will be adjusting, right, we will be creating a semblance of sanity. Mm. Uh, for me, it's uh, amazing to bring such a t uh, wonderful topic now. When we just a few episodes or last episode, we had talked with the uh, controller, was she the deputy controller of um, NADA? Was that NDLA? NDLA. That was NDLA. Okay. And we're talking about how it was necessary to examine the psychological balance and mental states of our politicians, people who come out for public offices. Amazing to have you talk about how there is also a need for us to target this mental balance from institutions like the home family, uh, family church, and uh, schools. Uh, don't you also think there is a huge need for us to ensure that uh, to a very large extent, those who lead us or rule us have that emotional and mental balance. Uh, all right. I mean, I, I love the point, right? But I always like to look at things from fundamental principles and foundational principles. So let's look at all these leaders, politicians. Where do they come from? Exactly. The I family. Mean, so the reason why they are behaving the way they are behaving is... You know, and a lot of them are dysfunctional, in They're all right. honesty, mm. right? Because what will cause a man to steal billions of dollars and continue to steal it? It is because he has a poverty mindset. Mm. It is not cash that makes you rich mm. or wealthy. It is a mindset. It is a state of existence, mm. a state of being. So you already have $200 billion in your account. Then you go and steal another one million dollars. You can never finish spending that two hundred billion dollars. That means that there's something wrong with you, right? And then if we trace it, you will find that it's, it's coming from the family. What values does he hold? What ideologies does he have? What mindset does he have? Now, so most of our politicians are not okay. However, let's backtrack to us. We do not understand that we have the power. That's right. Democracy is power of the people. So no leader can get to office without votes. So who put them there? We did. Are we thinking right? Or the stomach infrastructure goes back to the family. If the people that are influential in your family tell you that you know what no matter what anybody gives you this no. mm -hmm. if the religious institutions right and the schools you know they teach values ideologies of transformation of you know um choosing leaders with morals choosing leaders that are going to take us to the next level makes sense right if we all have a vision a dream. There is something called the American dream. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody believes that, man, America is a land of Gold. opportunities. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that does? Mm -hmm. But if you ask any Nigerian, uh, tell me about Nigeria. Ah, there's they, almost, they speak almost nothing. Negative. Almost Some nothing. Some say it's the first hellfire. So yeah. We don't, we don't you know, and and there's, uh, there's power in the spoken word. In the spoken word. The mm -hmm. power yes. of life and death. Lies in, the Lies, in the Lies in the tongue. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So it is what we have in our hearts. Yes, a lot of us have been burnt. A lot of us are going through pain. A lot of us are struggling. But guess what? If you go to the airport, you will find the planes filled mm -hmm. with Indians, Chinese, or Yibo people. What are they coming for? <laughs> but we... Are going to they say that in the capital of Nigeria now is Canada. Mm, true. Uh, I mean, true. So we are running away from where there's opportunity. And they are coming in. And they are coming in. Because they're seeing what we, we cannot are not seeing. see. Look, if you do a research, you find out that right more millionaires and billionaires are made in times of crisis. Why? Money is nothing but a store of value. Cash is not money. Value is what translates into money. Mm. 
And what is value? You solve problems. You take away pains. What country has more problem than Nigeria? None. What country has natural resources like us? None. None. What country has what we have? The number of people, the kind of will and drive that we have. Look, it doesn't, it's not rocket science to turn Nigeria around. Absolutely <laughs> not. You just have to ensure that number one, the environment is right. Mm -hmm. The mindset of the people are right. And you help the people change their beliefs about mm -hmm. this country. Because and they begin to speak positive. Yeah. And they begin to seek opportunities, mm -hmm. right? We all need to hold the same vision and mission. Because we have no other country. We have yeah. no other country. Fantastic. And there's no Nigeria without you and I. We True. are Nigeria. True. It is not the landmass. Mm. that makes us Nigeria. What makes us Nigeria is you and I. Yeah, the people. If we go to Ghana, if we go to Canada, if we go to the United it's States so of Nigeria. America, we stand out. Mm. If they pull out the Nigerian doctors in the USA, their system will shake. In the UK, their system will shake. True. So, Mr. Larry, apologies so, to interrupt you. You know, uh, you know to some, the... the this may sound rather irrelevant and people may ask, does this put food on our table? Because you've spoken about empathy, you've spoken about compassion, and I know that we have seen how the challenges, you know, that you've mentioned earlier, you know, in our country have led to domestic violence as, as well, and also security, health, mental issues, uh, which is, I, I think that um, it's very overwhelming as at today's, especially when it comes to our office spaces. So my question is, what is the approach or what are the ways to have a healthy mental life and a sustainable, you know, productivity in Nigeria today, especially when it comes to our leaders? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to leave the leaders because, we, look, the whole premise of mental health, yeah. right, is built upon what you have control over. Okay. Okay. Right? You don't have control over what somebody else does. You only have control over what you can do. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it back there, right? So I walk every morning. And along the path, right, over the 90 minutes, I feel... I, every day, I find about 10 people that sell food along my path. So it's 90 minutes, 45 minutes through, to 45 minutes through, about 10 people along my path, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Selling different kinds of food, right? Along that path, they're different about, you know, I see vans, about four vans selling pure water. I see about another 20 people selling alcohol, you know, in those sachets. Mm -hmm. Check that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I see people pulling, pushing the mm -hmm. trucks. The wheelbarrows. The wheelbarrow and the mm -hmm. bin. And the, yeah, right? We're very industrious. But one day, I went to meet the people selling food. One of them packs a very nice Jeep, CRV, new, opens the, the hood and has her coolers in there. So I went to meet her one morning. <clears throat> and I asked her, please tell me, how much do you make? She says, well... Um, where are you from? I said, you know, you see me walking past every day. I'm just doing a research. I'm a psychotherapist. I said, well, some days she makes 100K. Some days she makes 150K. From the boots. Of her, of her car. It's not her car. Right. She rents it 5K a day. It's not hers. Oh, she rents the, she the, rents the, the SUV. The, yes, and she only packs there. 5K per day. From 6 a.m., actually 5.30 a.m. to 12 noon. 5k a day. So that's her office. All she brings are coolers and those cellophane containers. 100, uh, 150k a day. I asked her how much does she invest in that? 30k to 40k. I'd like to day. ask why would she rent an SUV uh, to sell? It's USP. Is it because of? No, it's, it's USB. There are 10 of them. Oh. So what separates her from the rest of them? That's what I wanted the viewer to. Packaging. Packaging. <laughs> yes. Packaging. She creates a different mm. kind of value. Yes. And you know, when I walk past that uh, Food CRV, almost, the smell, you know there's one smell from one kind of stew. Even me, I've been saying to myself, one day, Sha, I will, I will, I will taste, taste this, yes. Because the number of people that stop, people drive and park and buy the food and go 150k a day 
do you think that person wow. will not be mentally stable? Wow. wow. She will be stable. I asked the um, the pure water people, how much do you, you know those vans that mm. gate men buy a full pack, mm -hmm. right? I asked how much a day? Say about 100k, 80k a day. That's what they sell. Wow. So what am I saying? Hmm? Mm. Nigerians need to find problems mm. that they can solve. Everybody wants to wear white collar. Everybody wants to do correct deals, correct jobs, mm. right? You know, when I walk, right, Okada's cars that are packed by the vulcanizers to fix their cars is incredible. Now, the people that do Baba Jebu, there's about six of them along that path. If you see the number of people I that are, there. people are looking for hope, mm. but they are looking for hope in the wrong, wrong places. places. And that is one of the critical problems mm. with mental health, mm. right? When there's a loss of hope, faith, and love, all sense of mental health, mm. right, is gone. Mm. So we need to recalibrate. Okay. We need to refocus. We need to stop seeing ourselves as problems. We need to stop seeing Nigeria as a problem. You need to look around and find a problem that so, you can solve. I mean, let's work this out. 100K a day times 30 days. How much is that? That's a lot of three money. That's How many people earn 3 million naira that are working in banks <laughs> with degrees okay. and masters and Nigeria PhDs? Maybe 1 million or 1.5. That's oh. she will be making I, if you give. I, I was yes. going to ask at this point, if we have so many, it's obvious that we haven't paid attention, little or no attention, to mental health mm -hmm. in the country. On the one part, because of the stigma, a lot of families who probably have one person who's ill will not come out to speak up. Mm -hmm. So what do we do at this point? Because I'm thinking about a psychological evaluation. How do you break that down for us? Okay. You know? It is quite interesting because <clears throat> research says that one in four yeah. right, uh, will suffer from a mental health challenge. Or the other in Nigeria is one in five. So as we're in here now, maybe it's him. That's not okay. Maybe <laughs> you, you can. <laughs> that is not okay. But one in five, yeah. right? If we work that, extrapolated over 200 million people, that tells you how much trouble we're, we're in. Yeah. Right? Which means that. 14 million. Yes. We, we need to begin to think about a program. Oh, yeah. Now, me. I like to leave government because I have no control over go oh, what government does. Sure, I want to speak sense. to the religious institutions. Mm -hmm. I want to speak to the schools mm -hmm. and I want to speak to parents, mm -hmm. right? Let the religious institutions, let them change what they call ministry. You know, what did they do during mm -hmm. COVID? Mm -hmm. They locked their churches. They locked the mosques. How many churches converted their church buildings to COVID centers. Isn't that what ministry is supposed to be? Sure. How many mosques did that, right? Isn't that what ministry is supposed to be? To clothe the people with our clothes, to, to feed, feed them, to, to, to provide health, right? And shelter, and in shelter, some cases. Right? Isn't yes. that what ministry is all about? Even scripture says that true religion, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yes. Jesus was preaching a parable. He says that, mm. you know, you did it for Whatsoever you do to the least of these ones, you do unto me. You got me. it. You got no, it. They, right. yeah. Ask them to stay away. Yeah. They, they you know, so, so, so our religious institutions need to take charge. You know, mm. if they truly, truly care about their members, they need to, they need to drive mental health. Mm. They need to drive it. Look, um, McKinsey and Co. did a research uh, March last year, the effects of COVID. They realized that about, about, between 26 to about 28 percent of people were both depressed and anxious mm. about 45 percent were anxious but not depressed right and about 55 to 60 percent of people were highly stressed mm. about 38 percent of people were stressed people had resorted to alcoholism they were depending on substances so you would find out that the companies that sell alcohol their profits shot up Apologies, I might have to interrupt yeah. your thoughts. I want to use this opportunity to open our phone lines. You can call us on 80 is 
written on your screen right now. And remember, you can be part of this conversation by uh, joining us on our stream um, live on the Silverbird um, YouTube and, of course, on our Facebook page, Real Talk with KK, and also on our YouTube page, Real Talk with KK. So please, we'll be expecting you all to please call on contribute on the topic at hand. So while, you're, while we were talking earlier, I know that part of the um, conversation that we've had, and you mentioned that uh, capital of Nigeria is now the new Canada, and I must say that our general practitioners are migrating away from the country, let alone the essential ones like you that are still few, that are still behind, still adding value to every one of us. So what's your opinion and where do you stand when it comes to giving advice to the medical practitioners for those who are living for greener pastures and also for those who are staying behind to the call of human service and uh, patriotism, if that's what to use right now. I mean, look, let's forget patriotism. Let's mm. look at existence. Mm. You were created for a purpose to solve a problem. Yeah. So you've created this platform to reach out to people, right? To bring experts to speak to them. Peradventure, there's somebody out there that has a mental health mm. issue. Mm. And this conversation will free them. Mm. You are fulfilling purpose. Mm. You're not just here to earn money. You are actually adding value. You are actually solving problems. Mm. Now, very few people see life and existence from the perspective of you know, purpose. The reason why we're still alive is because our purpose is still relevant, right? So if you're a medical practitioner, whatever profession you're in, right, you need to ask yourself some critical question. Who are you, right? What are you? What problems are you created to solve, right? What solutions are you? And where are you supposed to solve those problems? Are you supposed to solve them in Nigeria? Because you were born as a Nigerian for such a time as this, yes. for a reason. Look, the truth of the matter was at the heart of COVID, how many people got help from you, you, America, from Europe? They were solving their own problems. Mm -hmm. And we had to look inwards to solve our own problems. Now, the problems of this country, right, have to be solved by the citizens of this country. And for us to be able to solve those problems, we have to take each problem and see ourselves as the solution to those problems. Look, what they are going to look for there is just comfort because when you go and live there, you live from hand to mouth. Yes, mm -hmm. you have a good transport system. Mm. Yes, you'll be able to infrastructures eat. You'll have infrastructure, and but you'll mm. be a slave. Mm. Why? Because you'll be struggling to survive from hand to mouth. Mm. Where is it that you can start a business and blow? <laughs> Just blow. Mm. We have, have a, we have the I numbers. Have an issue with that word blow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just using no, it's, it. It's just a straight You know, you know, where is it that look at that woman now. Mm. Look at that woman that just sells food. 100 k d day. 3 million a month. Mm. Abba. From <laughs> man, from 5.30 to 12. That means that from 12, she does something else. Look, mm. it is time. Even doctors don't make the money she's making. Mm. You see, True. You know, True. For, for, for me, uh, forgive me, Kika, if I, I, I would want to throw this mm. back at us, you know. Um, Apologies. Yeah. We have a caller from Boardroom from Lagos. Hello, many, Godwin, many thanks for calling on the show today. What's your contribution on the show? Or the topic at hand? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello? Please go ahead. We can hear you. Hello, Turn down the volume. Me. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was calling to uh, contribute what uh, our guest speaker just said now. Go ahead, yeah, please. Hey. We can hear you. Okay, okay. So, uh, regard what our guest speaker just said now regard uh, Nigerians traveling out and uh, expatriates coming to Nigeria. Yeah, I just want to uh, keep in some factors there. Please go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, one thing we need to do here is how we, our, our leaders are watching this program and to know that 
we, the leaders are the reason why some Nigerians are going out to other countries to attend to some stuff. See, uh, our leaders here and, and investors, they don't, they don't want to uh, invest on local content. We have engineers here. Okay, let, let me take, for instance, somebody, uh, an, a technician who is not even a qualified technician will come from China, China to come to Lagos and come to Lagos and be, and, and be giving instruction to a trained engineer here in Nigeria. Do you understand? So we, 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 can, we, can, we can arrange a, a, a million dollars to pay even a... All right, many hey, times, hey, Baldwin, hey, hey. for making your point. Um, I think we'll have to go on a quick break and get a message from our sponsors. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Glad to know you're still right there with it. In case you just joined the show, today's conversation is on the mental health of Nigerians and missed the country's problem and tension. How should Nigerians navigate the psychological well-being? How can we be optimal in terms of productivity? Our guest on the show is popularly known as the Catalyst, but today I like to call Larry Olushala the mental health doctor. Again, do not forget that you can be part of this conversation by calling the studio number 80 988-774-00 and of course it's showing on your screen right now and also make your comments on our social media platform Real Talk with KK and of course uh, okay I forgot to get on Twitter <laughs> all right we are also streaming live on YouTube and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel Real Talk with KK and again many thanks for all you've been sharing thus far it's important for me to ask this question because I know institutionally there's a rigid structural approach to mental health and especially when it comes to the social Social well-being. Only a few out of the box thinkers like and visionaries like you uh, provide vital wellness services or service. So my question is: Is there um, any structure or whether um, governmental or NGOs um, to your kind of service or practice in Nigeria? Um, well, you know, every every Nigerian is just trying to do their best okay. in every sector, mm. whether it's banking whether it's health, whether it's, you know, we, we live in a system that is completely broken down. That's mm. the reality, mm. right? And, you know, Nigerians are well-meaning and, and Nigerians are believe that they have a calling, right? Or they see themselves as entrepreneurs, are trying to, you know, make their own contributions. Yes. Truth be said is the ratio of mental health practitioners to the population is abysmal. Mm. 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 Right. If you looked at it cumulatively, we probably don't have up to twenty thousand, from mm. doctors to nurses. psychiatrists to psychologists to mm -hmm. nurses to doc to coaches. We probably don't have up to twenty thousand. Mm. Now the good ones that we have, want to ja. In Canada, so in America, of yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And 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 there's been a lot of brain drain from mm. Saudi yeah. days, brain, yeah. right? from our universities. That's why mm -hmm. our, our federal government institutions, the educational system is, because it's fourth level, fourth grade professors, right, that are lecturing, right? The, 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 the core professionals then will not sleep with the students for, to give, to oh, give yeah. our grades. Those, those professors that taught us, they would never they stoop. They were seasoned. They would never stoop that never. low. But, so, 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 you know, we, 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 the system has, the, the standards of the systems have dropped, right? And yes, individuals and, you know, NGOs and entrepreneurs are doing the best that they can. And that's why, you know, collaboration, right, is very, very key. Collaboration with the religious institutions, collaborations with the schools, and then collaboration with families. Apologies, I might have to interrupt your thoughts again. We have Bernard from Kano. Hello, Bernard. What's your contribution on the topic at hand? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Please, uh, my name is Bernard. I'm calling from Kano. All right. Go ahead. Okay. You know, I'm the part of uh, the program we talk. Okay. Um, please, um, there is uh, something I want to get right to. You see, um, 
de 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 pathologie dans le vie, mais ils sont des centaines d'artistes. Vers le reportage, il a avant de se l'écouter. Oui. Yeah. Ici, nous prenons à deux, il y a la loi de l'artiste de la vie. And uh, considering what he's saying, I want to believe that most of these artisans are frustrated. Artisans need a new environment for them to thrive. But it's unfortunate that in this part of the world, there's no safety that makes for it. Most of these artisans you see, they were trained by few people in those days when Nigeria was good. If you go to the if you have a, a company they call Ananto, you come to Kami, you have a company they call uh, uh, Palestine, I'm talking about. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Many thanks. We, we had, thank you, Bernard, for that contribution. Uh, well, for me, it's um, how the value attached to the subscription, to the kind of services that you offer. We don't see, just like, let me just give a very parallel example. They say the white man would want to show you, express his love by giving you a rose flower, but we don't believe in rose flowers and all of that here. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to show my any sort of rose, rose flower, I'll give you a go or I leave, you know. <laughs> so in this part of the world, Nigeria specifically, I mean, I've seen people exhibit crazy, crazy. You want to see crazy. You see it on the streets. Uh, so the patronage to services like yours, it seems to be low. You don't hear people say, oh, you, I think you should see a, I think you should see a, uh, what? They call it a therapist. 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 Or or a wellness coach. You know, wellness or... coach, you know. It is only in seminars and retreats and you know conferences that we hear people like you churn out so much wealth of uh, wisdom, and then we were like, "Wow, wow! Why is that here?" It, it is because Nigerians are not open to self-development. Good. They don't realize that the best investment you can make is so not in stocks or bonds. It's in your health. Is in yourself. If you don't have a yeah. sound mind, mm -hmm. you've lost it all. So it's a sound mind. It's how do you develop your spirit, mm. right? Your soul and your physical essence, mm. right? That is your first investment. Mm. No, mm -mm. it's mm. something else. They want to wear the designer. They want to impress. <laughs> they want to pepper them. <laughs> how far would that take you? Mm. Nowhere. It cannot sustain even any money that you make. All right, apologies, I might have to interrupt your thought again. We have a, a caller from Bini. Hello, what's your name? Where, okay, I know you're calling from Bini. What's your contribution on the topic at hand? Good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm a teacher and I'm teaching a course in the Ministry of Education. Okay. And I'm teaching a course in the Ministry of Education. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please, can you just go ahead, please, because of time. Okay. Apologies. Uh, okay. I want to go right back to the point uh, Marshall was making. At this point, should we be thinking about setting up, you know, institutions where Nigerians can first seek help and get help? I mean, they, they, they yeah, are institutions. I know they're not enough. Yes. Um, they're not enough. That's because... And how lucrative are they? Let, let, let me explain how nations are run. Okay. You do a diagnosis identify what the needs are right and then you set your goals and you cast your vision for the year or the decade mm -hmm. so if you realize that mental health is going to be an epidemic in 10 years what do you do you ensure that people in secondary schools go into universities to study psychology psychiatry mm -hmm. and then you churn out a lot of them and then you equip your medical institutions, whether it's a government institutions and private institutions, and you ensure you collaborate with NGOs, right, for the next 10 years. Exactly. We don't have such, right? So we cannot even begin to have that conversation. 
because we are not forward thinking. Our leaders are just there for today, their own today, pockets, today, today. right? You know, they don't have a vision for the people because mm. they are not there for the people. They're not, yeah. obviously. Right. So, 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 look, it is very important that we recognize that and we stop expecting anything from mm. them because it would also contribute to your mental problem. Sure. All right. Many sure. thanks sure. for your submission thus far. And I must add that it's, it's very edifying to have you on the show you. today. Thank, Thank you, you so much for creating time to be part of our Thank you very uh, much. part of our lunch um, show today. But before we let you go, there's a segment that we call Trending Stories, mm -hmm. what caught our attention. And I think, I know we've run out of time, but we'll try and manage in many time we have. So the first trending story that caught our attention is that of June 12, which was on Saturday. Many Nigerians came out in their masses, especially the youths, to protest about bad governance and accountability. So my question is, what takes, you know, what's your, what's your own take on democracy and governance in reflection on this day, June 12? Well, you know, I, June, June 12 is a, mm. is a gift, right? Celebrating it you know, is, you know, relating with what, what has happened mm -hmm. and the history, mm -hmm. right? In taking it forward, the questions we have to ask ourselves is, is it just about demonstration? Okay. What next? Some people did June 12. What value are you adding? Mm -hmm. And what value are we adding to build mm -hmm. upon that foundation? Mm -hmm. sure. And I'd like to challenge our youth because they're the future of this nation, mm -hmm. right? They are bold, they are courageous. But they have to think strategically and tactically. They have to think long, medium to short term. Mm -hmm. Many are thinking short term, mm -hmm. right? All, all the demonstrations, you know, in acknowledgement is good. Mm -hmm. Then what? Then what? Look, the right. instrument of government is politics. Yeah. The yeah. instrument of politics is political parties. How many are members of political parties? Mm. We have yeah, the numbers, absolutely. right? We can raise the door. Mm. Go and join the political parties exactly. now. You know, that's the point most people are mm. pushing, especially as we have seen a violation of the rights of people in this particular June 12 celebration. <laughs> it's, an, it's the opposite of what democracy stands for that we saw. Yeah. But yes, I'd give it to the Buhari administration for ma mapping out the June 12 as a democracy day, but we've not seen the demonstration of the rights of the people, freedom of the rights of the people mm. on democracy Therefore, day. Therefore, in one minute, what's your submission on June 12? For me, on June 12, I'm just saying that basically those who are beneficiaries of the democracy we are clinging on to today and not those who fought for June 12. Yeah. And they are just beneficiaries now, and they're taking democracy the other way around. All right, many thanks for that. I think for me, I would like to ask Nigerians, what does June 12 signify for us? June 12 is not complete without the mention and the influence of MK Abiola. And I know that July 7th, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm right, the day MK Abiola died, what, what does it signify for Nigerians? The day Nigerians went against tribe and ethnic sentiment to unite the country, I ask, when will we have such a democratic leader? You know, Larry Lushala just asked a few minutes ago that what are the youth, what are the value that they are adding to what June 12 signifies? So as a straight um, successful accountant who MK Abiola was and was a brilliant person who in his manifesto, which, uh, was, uh, which was about getting rid of poverty and he knew that the issues of the economy was to create job opportunities. So June 12, you know, a struggle was a catalyst. Let me use that word because of our guest today for further struggle <laughs> of democracy, you know, and people like Gani Fawemi, um, a human rights and social activist who went to jail and also died. We have Yinka Oduma, Oduma King of Blessed Memory too. Uh, they were strong members of June 12 struggle. So people like Chief Shegun Oshoba, you know, and others who continually struggle for the progress and democratic structure of our country so you know in terms of equity in terms of accountability and good governance are the proceed of democracy so in my humble opinion it should not have you know i think M mq abiola shouldn't have died because sometimes i feel that most people always say that ah, he's, he's dead so we've given him in the position of an hero and the like he was a father he was a grandfather you know was a husband and i because i and just like you said earlier that quite a number of people have profited from his death and those who shouldn't be you know benefited 
who shouldn't have benefited from, from his death. So it's just unfortunate, and I think that what Larry Olushala asked earlier should be something we all need to ponder on. Okay. But quickly, um, uh, the second trendy story that caught our attention is that of Oniduro Mi Eche Wungo. That's the saga between Tokwe Aladi and Ade Yinka Alashi Yori. You know, and it, it seems like I caught you on the web. It's yeah. just part of our trendy story as well. To search, you know, do my research on it. And uh, I'm just thinking that um, I'm Kristen, so I, I think um, she shouldn't have come down that hard. That she hard. was actually referring to this young girl who's just a baby in her hands you know it's one thing for you to say when you were going to do the song because you love the song you know the spirit of god told you to shut up if the spirit of god told you to shut up the spirit of god did not ask her to shut up mm. so whatever it is that the spirit of god tells you to do is for you and not for the general Ha, my so people, for those who are listening and watching, man, this is just, <laughs> <laughs> this is just the human beings in play, if you ask yeah. me, because mm. I saw a lot of this over the weekend, and I think that, I asked myself, Kike, what's the lesson, when challenges are in mm. front of me, I ask myself, what's the takeaway, what's the lesson for Tokbe Alabi and many other people who are in fame, and I think that, um, hmm. People associate and uh, flock around people who are doing pretty well, and uh, especially when you're in success or you're in fame, and and when challenges surface, they join the bad wagon of those criticizing you. They start to point out your faults from day one because those are the things that I saw on social media. For me, the real owner of the song is not even Yinka or Lashi Yori, mm -hmm. but I believe God wanted to use Tokwe to give her publicity because of all that came around. Mm -hmm. I think she has over almost 300,000 followers from 100 and something. So Tokwe Alabi was grossly misunderstood. From my opinion, I'm speaking for myself, Nigerians. She meant God is more than Oniduro, which means a guarantor. God is more than a pillar of support. God is the being that she, 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 she believed that she could depend on because of the spiritual message that she was getting at the time. But I know that sometimes words could be misjudged. People trolling and bad mouthing her over public and social media space simply, uh, for me, are, are just simply hypocrites. Yes, I said so. They are, so, they are just hypocrites. Those beefing and casting abuses at her, especially in the music industry, are people that I feel that they are envious of her fame. And it goes down to show that the gospel music world has the same controversy from the secular music that we see today. You know, because they, they are expected to sing uh, to the glory of God. Sometimes we assume that they are perfect and all of that. And I think, you know, to so just put a wrap to all of this in conclusion, I think that song that song on it, Duro, is a, is, a, is a good song and it's a song that I believe that quite a number of people can relate with and understand what it means, which, which means that God is your guarantor and no human being can stand for you because at the end of the day, they will remind you of the good that they have done for you. On that note, I think this is where we call it a uh, round. <laughs> and I want to say thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. you. Thank we you. must all thank remember you. that we're all human. Oh, yes. yes. We're all human. Oh, we are. Yeah. We are. All right. And the and sky is big enough for everyone. Well, exactly. Yeah, as mm -hmm. much as the anointing is there, yeah, humans. we're all human. Yes. Yes. Larry Lushala has been wonderful. And it's a privilege to thank be. You. Thank you for all knowing now. Thank you. It's been wonderful having you on the show. We want to thank you also for coming. <laughs> for facilitating. <laughs> for facilitating the one and only answer. Apple, Apple, Apple. Oh, Apple. Apple. look, shall I? I want to thank you. Apple. Apple. <laughs> only in my dreams. Join us. I want to say, join us uh, same time next week. Remember, Have another time.